this Saturday afternoon. Watching the weather, expected to be about 76 degrees throughout the entire 200 lap time frame of this race. Uh, a forecast chance of a 30% isolated shower chance. That's the radar at the moment. Some stuff to the west of us. We're watching it. It does seem to possibly be breaking up. We just got all our fingers and toes crossed and we're hoping for the best. Well, DJ has made his way upstairs, resisting the urge to stop for some chowder or a lobster <laughs> along the way, where he's joined Marty Reed and Andy Petrie for the call of today's race. Let's see, DJ and Marty back from a week off, and a couple of this race's heavy favorites are back from a few weeks off, Marty. And if they're as well rested and ready to go as uh, he and I are, the rest of the field could be in trouble. And one of those guys is Kevin Harvick. He is the all-time lap leader here in the Nationwide Series. Uh, with about 588, he's got the most top fives, and he could be our first repeat winner. Yeah, he could be because he's had the probably the best looking car in practice as far as lap times uh, and how it stays on the racetrack and how it looks on the track. So, you know, he didn't qualify on the pole, but he's had the fastest car. It looks like he's the guy to beat. I expect him to lead a lot of laps today. Yeah, and talking to him during practice yesterday, he was so excited about this race car. He said this is when it's really fun to come to the racetrack when you have a car that's this good. Well, if you missed the first portion of Countdown, you also missed uh, the fact that we talked to Carl Edwards. He is another one of those guys. It's one of the six drivers that have won here before and he is very hot right now well he's got a ton of momentum coming off that win uh, you know the Fords in general have been getting better and better uh, Carl Edwards's performance is starting to really pick up and getting this win even though it's not the kind of racetrack that we're running on here on an oval it still gives you that momentum the whole team can uh, propel themselves here with their better parts that they've been putting on these cars and maybe get, uh, get a win yeah and the biggest problem he's got is he's he's winning but he's not gaining many points he's still 237 back uh, because Brad Keselowski keeps finishing there but he has to continue Continue this streak in case Brad should encounter some problems. They'll be ready to strike then. Well, and one of the things we probably should point out that uh, the last four years, the points leader coming out of race number 15 has gone on to win the championship. And that gives credence to what, excuse me, what you were talking about, 237 back. He's got to keep chipping away at this points lead and Keselowski's still right up there. Yeah, well, you just have to keep that pressure on, you know, keep bleeding laps, let them know that you're there and you're not going away. And this thing will close up and we'll have a real battle for this points championship. All right, as we said, uh, Alan pointed out, we've got our fingers and toes crossed that we get this race in, but lap 100 makes it official. Let's find out as we get this one started. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to Pit Road and welcome today's co-grand marshals. Hampshire Motor Speedway sweet holders and longtime supporters from EJ Prescott Incorporated, Peter and Stephen Prescott, as they deliver the most famous words in motorsport. Drivers, stop your engines! <laughs> hey, Kenny, you got me? Yes, sir. Check your wheel here. You got room to come forward. So the engines have fired on the 43 cars, and we have a special double dip for you today on our in-race reporters. One of them will be in the number seven, Danica Patrick. We'll be able to talk to her. There she is from our point of view at looking back at the driver. And also Carl Edwards as he is coming off back-to-back -back second place finishes and then a win last week. So our two in-race reporters, Danica and Carl Edwards will talk to both of them when we come back and get this race under green here at New Hampshire. Earlier today, qualifying was held here, and as you may have heard earlier, Brad Keselowski picked up the pole. He ran a time of 29.37 seconds at 129 miles an hour, his third of the season, sixth of his nationwide career, but it was his first pole here at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. All right, starting grid's gonna come across the top of your screen. Think about this, keep an eye on the first six because 11 of 15 wins have come from the first three rows. The other four outside the top 20. Those not making the field, Chris Lawson and Peyton Sellers. Sellers was disqualified on his qualifying run. Apparently, there is a fuel issue. Details later. All right, let's talk to our in-race reporter. First up, Danica Patrick. Danica, Dale Jarrett, ESPN, you have a copy? Copy. Hey, Danica, our first question comes from our ESPN mailbag, and Jane in Cana, Virginia asked, who has helped you the most since you started in NASCAR, and what is the best advice you've received? Um, it's kind of breaking up, but I think, you know, the most important thing is just to really finish this race and uh, bring the boat Eddie car home with uh, all four corners on 
it. Yeah, this is a completely different racetrack than what you've seen in these stock cars your first three times. What was the biggest challenge that you faced in getting around here? Getting out of trouble is kind of hard, you know. I thought that uh, and it doesn't seem quite as hard in IndyCar, but, you know, there's more cars out here and there's just more stuff to be aware of. But, you know, there's, there's so much to learn for me. It's all coming at me fast and I'm just trying to, trying to manage it all. All right, Danica, have a great day. Thanks for talking with us. Now Andy's going to talk to your crew chief, Tony Urey, Jr. Thank you. Hey, Tony, Andy Petrie in the booth, you got us? Yeah, I got you, Ed. Hey, Tony, uh, you guys done a good job this week and uh, made a lot of laps and made a lot of gains during the weekend. What part of the racetrack have you focused on has given you, say, the most trouble, and how have you been working on it? I think the biggest thing is just uh, all the laps we can get Danica in the car is, is what it's all about right now. She's got a lot to learn. Uh, we've really been working on entry. You know, uh, we had a little bit of trouble in Milwaukee, and it kind of we were just making sure we didn't have that problem again. But she's done an excellent job. I mean, there's nobody here that's picked up as much time as she has this weekend. So, uh, you know, she's done a great qualifying effort right here. So we're just going to stay out of trouble and do the best we can today. Okay, Tony, so far so good. Good luck today. Thanks for talking to us. All right, let's quickly take a look at our other onboards. We already know that Dan and Patrick has one. How about Justin Allgaier with Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, Stephen Wallace, and Michael McDowell, Elliot Sadler, and our other in-race reporter, Carl Edwards. Hey, Carl, Dale Jarrett, the ESPN, you got me? Here, so be strong on the outfit road like you guys always are. Nice and smooth. Hey, Carl, I know you're coming to the green. What do you need your car to do best today to win this race? I don't think he heard us, but that. Uh, DJ's not going to talk to us. Well, <laughs> we tried, Carl, but it's too late now because uh, we are going to be going green here. As uh, here is the race analysis, we're going to go for 200 laps around this one mile circuit at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Pit road speed is 45 miles an hour. Don't get busted, it costs you a lot. In the pit window, 75 to 80 laps in those corners. Seven degrees, the most banging. To give you an idea, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway is just nine degrees in banking. Pace car has pulled down, and it is Brad Keselowski bringing him to the green flag here on race number 16 at New Hampshire Motor Speedway, and it is green. Turn number four, it is Brad Keselowski, but Kevin Harvick, who started third, has quickly moved up to second, and he's got the inside line, guys. Yeah, this is a difficult place to get your car going on cold tires, air pressure's down. This flat racing surface makes it very difficult, especially to, on the exit of the corner. See, Harvick comes up the side, but he's having a hard time putting the throttle all the way down. Falls back into line, now with Carl Edwards in third, Allgaier fourth, Kyle Busch now fifth. It literally feels like you, both of your rear tires are flat as you try to get going with on this racetrack. It only takes about three or four laps, and then the car will, and the tires build up that air pressure, and it feels much better. I don't know how many times I've had to tell my driver, just wait for it, wait for it to build up. It takes a while on these flat racetracks to get that pressure up. You want to run them as low as possible because there is some grip later in the run if you don't have those tires really built up on pressure. Carl Edwards trying to go side by side with the 33, can't get it done. Now he's got issues with Justin Allgaier, who's on the outside in the 12. See Carl really get down in the corner here. They're three wide coming out of four. All of a sudden they swallowed up the 33. Don't know if he had a bobble or what, but Kevin Harvick falls into the clutches of all three of those cars. Kyle Busch included, and he's the meat in the sandwich. All three of those guys raced down in the corner. They didn't give it to anybody. That's a great move by Justin Allgaier. I don't know that we've seen that. Kyle Busch following him around the outside of those two. Uh oh, so, a little contact there. Saw a little raindrop action also down there in turn three. We'll keep our eye on that. Right now, we are still lean, mean, and green. You see a tire mark down the left side of Kevin Harvick's car from Carl Edwards' car. All right, let's get you caught up while this is going on. Dennis Setzer has uh, pulled it off. He's our first start in park, and uh, Kevin Swindell in the uh, 37, they've posted him. He has no crew chief on the box. That could be a little long, hard day if you're going to do all the work yourself. 
Here's the battle with Allgaier and Kyle Busch. This is for second. Here comes Kyle, and he makes it look easy. Yeah, I think uh, Allgaier just gave it to him. At this point of the race, that's probably a smart thing to do. He can just sit in here and follow Kyle and uh, kind of see where his car's strong or maybe where it's weak. Yeah, a lot of times early on here, you don't want a guy chewing on your bumper right then either, especially when it's Kyle Busch, and he's wanting to go forward in a hurry. All right, let's go back just a couple of laps ago. Uh, word that Brendan Gone tried to... Well, almost knocked down the wall. He brushes it there. He has had he just he barely kissed it there. He's picked up seven spots in the points in the last three races, coming off his season best third just last week on the road course. And he's got his inside door handle full of the 99, Trevor Bain. Yeah, that dark area that we saw him up in there, there's no grip right there. Uh, you won't see many guys in there, and that's about as easy as you're going to hit the wall from that point. So he got by with minimal damage. Bain gets around him, so move Bain into 12th, gone back to 13th. Whoa! And Danica Patrick is involved with Morgan Shepard. We're good here. Caution is out. We'll come off the wall there and just watch that one step down there to your right. See if there's any damage on the left side of the car. Nothing apparent on the right side. Maybe just a little we'll fender. Up in the Tony Jr. It was a battle around. for 28 okay. left at that point. A bit. She's yeah, got left front damage. He totally took me out. Yeah, they got a little work to do in the pits here, but they'll get her back out. There's Tony Uri Jr. up on the box, probably waiting for our uh, replay to see what happened on this deal. Definitely got some tire rub there. Here we go. See, as they get down into turn one here, this is a place, and Morgan Shepard just literally got loose getting in there, and that's one thing. It's your responsibility to that driver on the inside not to let that happen. You know you, there's no banking to lean on, and this will happen more than once today. I guess the only thing that Danica could have done there is maybe give him a little bit more room uh, at this point of the race. I uh, wouldn't have to be racing quite as hard, but... Still not her fault at all. No, it's not. But you have to also, as a responsibility as the driver on the outside there, too, you know that if you pull down on that car that you're taking more air off of it, and that's more likely to happen. So the crew pulls the fender out on the left front, and as they go to work, we're going to go to work. And uh, when we come back, we'll reset it for you right now. Danica shaking her head saying, no, not this soon. And 200, we're getting ready to go back to green flag racing. It is Brad Keselowski inside of Kyle Busch, Justin Allgaier, Carl Edwards, Joey Logano, and Kevin Harvick. All six are former race winners this year. In fact, they are the six of the eight that are in this field. And they're all running one through six, coming out of two. Kyle Busch did a great job on that restart of anticipating Keselowski going and now use that outside lane to get by. Kyle, one of our six former winners of this event and we talked about will the streak be broken 23 different winners as the two teammates side by side there going down into one yeah, there's no contact there yeah i got really got loose right there did a nice job of saving it and not getting into the 22. You can't tell you danica patrick got back out she is one lap down also off the track now brian keselowski has parked it so is johnny chapman josh wise kevin swindell and we already told you about Dennis Setzer. That updates you on everything. Let's go back to the restart, show you some of the contact, and uh, watch Brad Keselowski right here with Mr. Bush. What's the message? Huh. And then watch on the restart here. That's, oh, well, that's a little nudge to the 89 saying thank you very much, I think. Well, yeah. Yeah, she didn't appreciate what happened there. And uh, you know, she did nothing wrong in what she was doing. It's just unfortunate, but you know, that's part of the racing here, too. We're going to see it happen more than once today. Allgaier's got his uh, mirrors now, his door full of the 60 of Carl Edwards. Edwards underneath him, down into one. Kevin Harvick looking on. And you can see how Carl Edwards handled that situation going in that corner a little bit differently. He got out of the throttle, let his car roll, but then he moved away from the 12 car, so handled it quite a bit different. Good action. Two different spots on the track for the race lead on the left side with Kyle Busch in front of the 22. Let's get an update from Dave Burns. And Marty, Kyle wanted his team to take a look at that left front fender. Keselowski's taking a look at it right now, and he's going to pass it and retake the lead. It appears going out of turn number two, but he wanted him just to take a look at it. They said it looks fine to us right now, and apparently no damage from that contact, no real damage, Vince. 
Well, in the 22 of Brad Keselowski, it didn't take him long to figure out that his car was real good. When he was asked for an early report on his car, he said, the track's a little slick, but the car's really good. I think we're seeing it here on the inside of Kyle Busch. Well, the other things we're seeing, guys, is uh, those continue the battle up front. All of a sudden, Kevin Harvick's found some new life again after dropping back to sixth. Yeah, his car was great in practice yesterday, so I think it was just a matter that Kevin's car. And what you have to understand, there was a modified race here before that has put different rubber down on this racetrack. They're going to have to wear that off. So they're in kind of a different situation with their cars than what they've seen all weekend. Yeah, you don't want to adjust on it yet until they run about 25 laps on this track, on this on this tire, because that rubber will kind of mess you up a little bit. It'll make you, make you think your car's doing something uh, that it won't be doing after it rubbers in with the with their Goodyear tire. Well, after a couple of laps side by side, Brad Keselowski finally retakes the lead. So we have another lead change between the two men that have led this race. Battle for fifth with Justin Allgaier, and here comes Joey Logano. Logano, not one here at his hometown track in the Nationwide Series. He has won in other series. Yeah. So, uh, that yeah. one here, yeah. In the top six, we've got three guys that are part of that 23 winners and three guys that haven't won here. So we have opportunities to keep the streak alive. We'll break it right there. Sort of has settled down now for that position battle a little bit further through. And actually, it's still looking pretty good up front for Brad Keselowski. He's opened up about a six-tenth of a second lead. There's the gap from Joey Logano in sixth all the way up to our race leader. Just 17 laps complete. The 2010 FIFA World Cup continues with the round of 16 on ESPN and ABC tomorrow. First on ESPN at 9.30 a.m. Eastern, epic matchup. Germany takes on England, then on ABC at 2 Eastern, Argentina and Mexico. 2010 FIFA World Cup on ESPN and ABC tomorrow. And we can tell you right now it is 1-1 between Ghana and the U.S. Landon Donovan has scored for the United States. Battle for fifth is heating up. Justin Allgaier and Joey Logano. Logano on the inside, and it looks like he's finally going to be able to clear him. That's been going on during the commercial break. And also during the commercial, we can tell you, Kevin Harvick got around Kyle Busch to take over second place. So whatever Kevin's problem was there, that little stretch where he dropped back to sixth, it's over. Yeah, I think Kevin's car was probably just too loose. He got himself in a situation to where uh, a couple of cars got around him and now he's the fastest car on the racetrack as he's right on Brad Keselowski's bumper. Coming up on lap traffic there, that's the 43 of Brad Baker. And uh, Vince, let's get an update from Pit Road. Well, just as you were talking about that 33 of uh, Kevin Harvick, Harvick did say he was a little bit too loose at the start, but his crew chief, Ernie Cope, was telling me earlier today, that's one of the areas of advantage for this 33 team because of Harvick's experience, and he likes to drive a loose race car. They Plus, they set it up to be loose or free early on in the run because as the fuel burns off, the car generally is tightening up. They've done some things with this car in regards to testing at some of their previous races. They really feel like they found something in the Set up and Ernie Cope, who you see on the left side of the screen, was very confident they were going to have a car to deal with today, and it certainly looks that way early on. It does right now as he has pulled back up very close to our race leader, Brad Keselowski. Let's update you on one more park as uh, David Gilliland has taken the 91 behind the wall. Battle for 15th as we move deeper in the field, and that is, of course, the 62 of Brendan Gaughan. Jason Leffler underneath him in the 38. Now, Brendan's gone. He's been running well the last few weeks, so it uh, doesn't look like that uh, little contact he had with the wall was too bad for him. You can see Leffler trying to go on the inside. And we know Brendan Gone likes that outside lane. That's working here pretty well because they have a little more banking on this track as you move up in the lanes. And uh, Brendan can take that to use it to his advantage. 35 of Jason Keller going underneath. Jason had qualified 13th. He had a good qualifying run, and he looks like he's got a good race car. Yeah, previous winner here. So knows how to, to make his way around this racetrack. And this is, even though we talk about this a mile track, this is this race is like a short track. Every driver and crew chief considers this a short track, so that's how you set it up. And nobody better on the short tracks over the years than Jason Keller. And Jason leads all drivers with 18 starts here in now 24 nationwide series races. Let's go up to the battle for fourth because Joey Logano has already gotten around Justin Allgaier about four or five laps ago. Now he's knocking on the door as he is right up there with Carl Edwards and underneath him. Here we go. I got to kind of put him in the same category as Harvick. His car seems to be better the more laps that they put on it. 
kind of set the car up loose and be better at the end of the run. Yeah, and we heard him on the countdown show say that that was his problem last year whenever Kyle Busch beat him here, that his car wouldn't go for the first 10 laps. It took him, and so he lost so much time that. But in a long run, he felt like his car was really good. He was hoping they might be a little quicker uh, after a restart today, but you can see his car is going very well now. Moving back to Justin Lofton, he is in the uh, 27 Baker curb machine. And Lofton, of course, was the 09 ARCA champion. He won six times, and he's making his third Nationwide Series start. Dave, what's the latest? Well, Marty, the latest is that this car is a little bit tight off the corners for Justin, but when they lost their sponsor three weeks ago, they had to make some cutbacks on the team. John Reese sitting there in the chair, the car chief, became the crew chief. But today, he's got some extra help from the Sprint Cup side. Sitting next to him, Greg Biffle, a guy that started 10 races for them this year and finished second twice. Why is Biffle here? Well, he's partially here for race strategy, but also to tell potential sponsors Hey, if you come back on board with Baker Curb Racing, I will be there. I want to race with these guys. All it's going to take is a little cash. And you saw as that was going on, uh, you saw Danica Patrick. She's now two laps down as uh, the green flag run here has gotten longer. And it is Kevin Harvick right behind race leader Brad Keselowski. Third place there in your picture. The 18 of Kyle Busch, then Joey Logano, Carl Edwards, Justin Allgaier. And when Danica went down a lap or another lap there, it was a little tight spot getting into turn three. Looked like she was going to maybe give him the outside, give Keselowski the outside, and she, uh, Keselowski wanted the inside. Well, and the bad news there is now she's no longer in position for the lucky dog. And so now she's really going to have to keep working and hoping that a couple of cautions come around. Here's what it looked like. Let's go back. You see Keselowski kind of committed to the bottom. No yeah. problem, though. Yeah, she ended up giving room, but that's it's a little closer than that, as you can see, as you get down into the corner. I think you just get a sense of the frustration there that this is a huge learning curve. Everybody has talked about it. You talked about it on Countdown. This is probably the most difficult track for her to come back on after being gone four months. Well, it's just a difficult track, period. I mean, everybody that comes here, I mean, can tell you how hard this track is. It's just, a, you know, when you're dealing with a flat, fast racetrack, it's just hard, uh, really, to get a hold of. Joey Logano has now cleared her, and he uh, maintains his fourth position. Here comes Carl Edwards working his way around the 23 of Robert Richardson Jr., and also now on Danica. Justin Allgaier right behind. Yeah, with the other three tracks, just stay up high the three. You got the 61 back. He'll go to the bottom up here. Just leave the bottom open for him. Looking inside, inside. See as Carl Edwards goes around there. But the other three tracks where there was banking, she learned to what adjustments would help her car in certain situations. Those adjustments don't really work on this racetrack, so she's having to really relearn that uh, too. So this is just a learning experience. Uh, she's gotten better all weekend long, so uh, things are getting better. And even though she's getting passed here and getting left again, I think she's still doing a nice job out there, Doc. And DJ, exactly right. They took her to Milwaukee, another track that is very fast and very fat, uh, flat, and then to try to help her get understand the steep learning curve. And she was doing really well on that Tuesday a week ago, and she pancaked the right side of the car, basically destroyed the car. That made her a little timid coming here as far as getting in the corner. But the, the next day in Milwaukee, by the way, they took a backup car out, and she was running laps close to what some of the cup affiliated teams running so all Tony Uri Jr. said was Danica it's all about getting left on this very tough racetrack and uh, trying to learn to turn this heavy stock car. Every time I go low I just get more understeer so like I can't pass them. Pass him up top. Set him up. Drive it in a little deeper or try to get a run on the outside of him. So some tips from the crew as uh, Danica Patrick continues her learning process. Meanwhile, up front, we can tell you Brad Keselowski and Kevin Harvick are right now about a tenth of a second apart as uh, we're also looking and checking in right there on the 21 of Austin Dillon. Dillon in the tenth position. He has got the 27 of Lofton right in front of him. That is for position on the racetrack. Vince, give us an update on the 21. Well, Austin Dillon's a good story. Of course, this 21 we've documented throughout the nationwide series trying to stay alive in regards to sponsorship for Richard Childress Racing. Austin Dillon is Richard Childress' grandson. He's just 20 years old, running full time in the truck series. This is his first nationwide series start this year. The team told him earlier, pick up a tenth and you're going to be good. He's been competitive so far. Not bad for his uh, nationwide series debut. He started eighth, as you noted. He's lost a couple of spots, but getting to the end, logging laps, get experience. 
get better as the race goes. So far, so good for Austin Dillon. Currently 11th in the Truck Series points. He won the pole for the last two Camping World Truck Series races. Let's check in on our race leader as we've uh, completed uh, 39, now almost 40 of 200 laps. A couple other cars that have tended at home. That's Baker in the 43, O'Quinn in the 90. Stay with us. We got to talk to these guys about not passing during commercial. Kevin Harvick got around our race leader, Brad Keselowski, and then Kyle Busch followed suit. So we've had a shuffle in the top three, and there you see them the 33 of Harvick, then Kyle, and going around the now lap traffic of Willie Allen, the 22 of Brad Keselowski. I'm actually probably more surprised it took Kevin Harvick 45 laps to get the lead as good as his car has looked all weekend, but now it's back where it's, uh, where it's been all weekend is up the top. Let's go back and show you what happened during the break. This was the pass. Yeah, he's really getting a good run off the corner, so he was able to get that inside spot here. You see, get back to the throttle. Brad didn't press the issue right here. He's able to get to the front. And then right after that, let's go on board with Kyle. And you can see Brad pointing. Yeah, he just says, oh, go ahead and take it. I'm going to give you this spot right now. Uh, this is really smart racing, and the cut drivers really know how to do this well. They know that, hey, at this point, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to let him have this spot later. If my car's better, I expect a little, maybe a little bit of that same kind of give and take. Well, is there a problem on the 22? Let's check in with Vince Welch. No problem, Marty, in regards to uh, anything significant. It's just that the car has started to go away from him a little bit. As he said early on, it, and we reported that the car was really good early in the run, but as the run has gotten deeper, Harvick's car has gotten better. Keselowski's has not. In fact, Brad came on the radio just a few moments ago and said, we're going to have to get that air pressure out of there. They had made the decision to make an air pressure adjustment early. As you see Kyle Busch going around the outside of Kevin Harvick for the lead. So Keselowski's car not handling as well. Obviously, Kyle Bush is much better as he takes advantage. And Mike Wallace is getting a front row seat on all the action that's going on for the battle for the race lead. So Kyle Bush, who now needs only about 83 laps to become the all time race leader or lap leader in series history, passing Mark Martin's 8,082 or whatever it is. It looked like uh, Kevin Harvick and Mike Wallace kind of arguing over a little space there. Oh, no, nobody argues out on the track. Come on. There you see Keselowski trying to get around. Mike finally does. So it has allowed Kyle to open up a, a sizable lead now. One of the bigger leads we've had at all of 1.2 seconds. <laughs> all right, we saw the move out of the way a little bit earlier. Let's ride on board and show you what we're talking about. Yeah, he kind of felt like Mike may have uh, contributed him losing the lead. So he's... Uh, Delivering the message right there. You can see Mike was had his finger or his hand out the window pointing for <laughs> Kevin to go to the inside. Kevin said, no, I want to do this first. Yeah, <laughs> he wanted to give him a message that he didn't appreciate him racing that hard uh, as he when he had the lead. Well, Harvick has now dropped back 1.8 seconds behind the race leader. There's Joey Logano who's running in fourth, trying to go around Mike Wallace. Wallace getting a lot of camera time right now, but all for the wrong reasons as he's <laughs> getting passed. And both these Gibbs cars look like that they get just continue to, to stay their car stays under them. I think that's a combination of springs and shocks set up that don't abuse the tires and their drivers doing a good job. How about the 60 of Carl Edwards right now Carl in fifth place Justin Allgaier close behind in six. Let's get the latest on uh, Mr. Edwards Dave Burns. Yeah Marty Carl is quite a ways back started second but has not been able to chase down the leaders says he needs front grip and he told crew chief Drew I could use about 50 pounds in the right rear now in this world where we talk about a pound of air pressure maybe a half a pound here and there Tim Brewer in the Craftsman Tech Garage where am I going to get 50 pounds into the spring rate of the right rear of the 60 car in the first pit stop. That's pretty simple, Dave. What we try to do, folks, before the race in practice, we want to see what our car reacts to. So that the determining length of the hardness and the length of the rubber, when we insert it in here, we can put 50 pounds of spring rate right here. And we've got them hanging, so we just simply insert them on a pit stop. But what he's trying to do, by increasing the spring rate here, it goes directly to the left front. And what he's trying to do is plant that left front tire into the racetrack, making the car turn better. All right, thanks, Tim, for the update. And you can see Justin Allgaier has gotten around the 60 of Carl Edwards, so it's still a bit of a struggle for Carl as they're going to have to try and work on this. Yeah, and if you get the car, probably he's probably will be tight through the center of the corner. And if you get that the car tight there, it slows you down, and then that hurts your exit speed. You have to wait to to get to the throttle too. Yeah, Brewer is doing that little uh, 
kind of a tutoring thing on how to make these cars handle. I remember one time he told me, he said, remember, Andy, right rear go down, left front come up, car push. <laughs> I've always remembered that. We've got 25 cars on the lead lap as you're on board with Carl Edwards. And, uh, of course, we talked about the threat of rain, although we've seen just a few, few light drops. We're getting closer to the halfway point. We're at lap 55. Uh, Dr. Jerry Punch, what are you hearing down at Pit Road about strategies? Marty, we're about 20 laps away from what will be a scheduled pit stop. And now several crew chiefs here, not those guys in the top five, but from there on back, are talking about maybe rolling the dice. Remember how important track position is here? Well, with rain in the area, are they going to race to lap 100 and halfway? Some of them say, you know, we just might. We might roll the dice and take only two tires on that first stop to try to get up there and get some track position if the rain was to come at halfway or just past. They're talking about it here with that pit stop coming up in about 20 laps. Well, as you finish up, Jerry, we get a great view right there of the gap that now is between first and second, Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick. And you realize between these two, they are second and third on the all-time win list. Busch has 35, Harvick has 36. Quick quiz, who has the all-time list? Kevin Harvick. Mark, Mark. No, 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 number one in wins is Mark Martin. Come on. <laughs> Stay with us. Major League Baseball continues tomorrow and Monday night. First on ESPN Sunday Night Baseball at 8 Eastern. Joe Girardi's Yankees head west to take on Joe Torre's Dodgers as part of the ALNL showdown presented by State Farm. Then on ESPN 2's Monday Night Baseball at 7 Eastern, two of the game's brightest young rookies face off. Steven Strasburg leads the Nationals against Jason Hayward and the Braves. Major League Baseball on ESPN tomorrow and ESPN 2 Monday. Also available on ESPN3.com. Just past a quarter distance into today's NASCAR Nationwide Series 200 lapper at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Kyle Busch is out in front. One of three different leaders who have traded the lead four times. He's opened up about a second and two tenths of a gap. Back to second place, Kevin Harvick. Third position has just changed, changed hands as well. Joey Logano has gone through Brad Keselowski. Time for us as we uh, close in on that first set of pit stops to get you up to speed from Nationwide Insurance. We check in on the leaders, starting with Dave Burns, who's covering Kyle Busch today, Dave. Yep, and Alan, after having a less experienced driver in the car last week, the team is happy to have back their experienced driver, who has won five times this year, Kyle Busch. Jason Radcliffe told me it takes the pressure off the team in a lot of areas. Don't have to remind him to watch his pit speed, remind him about spinning tires on restarts, pit end etc and in a lot of ways it's back to normal for these guys leading the race Vince well Kevin Harvick in the 33 already has a donut on the driver's side of his car from some earlier side racing side by side racing but the car has been good Harvick said he needs to start off take off a little bit better but otherwise it is good and that's just what Ernie Cope is crew chief talked about earlier in the race they were going to start it off free and let the car come to them Dave Vince Joey Logano is up to third now with some of the fastest laps running the race so far Kevin Kidd is crew chief and him have really gotten better at working together as the years goes in the final minutes of final practice yesterday Kevin wanted out loud to Joey on the radio about combining two ideas that they had talked about Joey said that's exactly what I was thinking let's do it it was the direction that paid off for them and it's what made this car as fast as it is today Vince Brad Keselowski currently running fourth. He led 38 laps earlier today, and then the car started to go away from him a little bit. He says he needs to turn the center a little bit better and be quicker on the restart. It's the same car he drove to that dominating victory in Richmond. He looked like the dominating car to beat early in the race. As mentioned, led 38 laps. Brad Keselowski still got a good car, even though he's dropped to fourth. The 12 of Justin Allgaier is fifth. He says the drive off is great. They are looking forward to that first pit stop though. You know this is just his second time here in New Hampshire in the nationwide series. Last year he said it really took him the first half of the race to get used to the track and how to drive it. But then the car got a lot better and he got a lot better in the second half of the race and he got that 13th place finish. They expect better today. Dave Burns. Vince just a little while ago Tim Brewer told us how to get 50 pounds of spring rate right in the right rear. Sounds like Drew Blickenser for Carl's crew chief is going to go a little less than that with a wedge and air pressure adjustment to try to achieve what they're getting at. Perhaps doesn't want to take as big a swing at this point in the race, but remember, this is a short one. They may only have two chances at making the car right. Doc? Back in seventh spot, Reed Soares has started 12, got all the way up to seventh spot and said it won't go anymore. To quote Reed, he said, I am just getting killed on the straightaways. I cannot get off the corner. And now it is sliding the nose, plus they've got a window brace loose on the back of the car. They are planning their first pit stop in four laps to make adjustments to the car. Pence. 
Dock the 66 of Stephen Wallace is running eight. Their best finish this season, sixth. Stephen desperately wants to crack the top five, and they felt like they had a car that could do it today. They've really made some strides with a couple of recent tests at Pikes Peak and Milwaukee, where they feel like they made gains in the sway bar and the front spindle areas. They put those changes on the car here today. They thought they would have a better car, and it's been good, although it's a little tight in the middle right now. Dave? Justin Lofton started ninth today, gained a couple of positions, but then fell back. He's complaining about the car being very tight, but also the brakes are giving me no feedback. And if he's used them up, that'll be hard to get back for this young driver, Doc. And back behind them in the sixth car, Ricky Stenhouse really starting to come in and get more and more confidence week after week. Stenhouse driving the same car that he logged his only top 10 finish thus far this year. That was a night at Phoenix. His career best finish came on a flat, fast, one-mile racetrack at Milwaukee a couple of years ago. He likes this kind of track. Vince. The 88 of Elliott Sadler is running 11th. This is his first of 10 races for Junior Motorsports, and he's really excited about this opportunity. And the opportunity to work with Tony Urey Sr. as the crew chief pops has really uh, had a good season when you look at what the 88 has done and the variety of drivers that have been in there. Even uh, when Jamie McMurray stepped in the car, they really stepped forward, and they believe they can do the same with uh, Elliott Sadler in the 88. He says right now it's tight rolling through the center and loose on the exit, Marty. And one position further back, Austin Dillon started eighth, still got a good run going. He is currently 12th. We have 20 cars on the lead lap, eight cars out of this race. And just give you a quick verbal update, Danica Patrick, 35th right now, three laps down. Race leader Kyle Busch has opened up a 4.1 second lead. This spells trouble for everybody if we continue to have long runs, because this has been the definite killer on long runs right now, the 18 car. Yeah, he's been anywhere from a tenth and a half to two and a half tenths faster per lap uh, for quite a while now. And that's opened up that big lead. So he's uh, Kyle's doing a great job of driving the car and they've got a nice setup under it for him. While all this is going on, there's Kevin Harvick, who is in second place, trying to get around the uh, 70 of Mark Green. We can tell you that Tony Range has pulled on to pit road and he is taking his first pit stop. He's shown in a 23rd position when he came in. Michael Annette has come into pit road. He had a birthday just this uh, past Wednesday. Happy birthday to him. And I think, uh, what is it, Monday or Tuesday? Another birthday, Junior Johnson. He'll be seven years old. Happy birthday to Junior. Vince? Up 14 spots from where Michael Annette started today, and they believe that this team is ready to break through for a good, strong run. They've been hovering around it. Tight on exit. They made an air pressure change, pulling out that right front fender as well, Doc. And Reed Sorge in the first of the top 10 cars to make a pit stop. They don't get a good a fuel mileage as some of the others, the Chevys and Dodges. Make a wedge adjustment, air pressure in the rear. They're going to change all four tires. They're trying to get that thing to get some grip coming off the racetrack. Dave. And the 38 car could not wait to come to pit road. They're going to make a wedge and an air pressure adjustment. No front grip at all for the 38 today. And while all this continues, Kyle Busch just continues to motor on. He's completed 76 laps now as he comes this time by. And there you see the view as other cars are making their way to pit road. The 99, there you see Trevor Bain as he's come in. The 05 of Willie Allen is already a lapper down. And let's uh, go to Dave Burns. Trevor Bain and all of his youth saying the car is way tight. That'll be a track bar and air pressure adjustment for him. Behind him, leader Kyle Busch comes down pit road. Air pressure adjustment, left front fender fix as well. As the tire changer goes to the left front, he'll take the tire off. They'll try to give it a little tug before he heads off of pit road. They do it, and he's gone. The 33 of Kevin Harvick, he's been in the front today for some time. He likes his race car. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment. They're going to change four tires. And remember, he said he needs it to take off a little better, Dave. Carl Edwards crew finishing up now in their fourth tire spot. Stop it is a wedge and air pressure adjustment for him. Joey Logano also on pit road. They called for track bar and air pressure adjustment for Logano. They will go to the back of that car with a wrench. The air pressure adjustment already made for Joey. Joey complaining just a little bit about his car, about a one tight on entry. The exit, so-so, according to the driver. They don't want to change too much because it was very fast during this last run. Paul Menard is on pit road too, guys. They'll make a four tire change for Paul a wedge and air pressure adjustment for the 98 car as well.
And you see the problems for Austin Dillon as they have major problem on the left rear of this car. And so, you know, they just weren't quite finished with the pit stop when they pulled away. They have to, even though they're pitting out of box, they have to get that tire on. Brad Keselowski has pitted, and so is the 12 of Justin Allgaier. Vince? Well, it's a big help for uh, Brad Keselowski. He's got an open pit spot ahead of him and one behind him, so it's clean on entry and exit. Says he needs to turn the center better and be quicker on the restart. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment, a four-tire change for the 22 of Brad Keselowski. So right now, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has stayed out. He is shown as the race leader. Of course, Austin Dillon's going to get a penalty for pitting outside the box, but they had little choice. They couldn't do much with the way the car was sitting. So a tough break for him. First three cars uh, have not uh, made their pit stops yet. Uh, well, Stenhouse and Colin Brown running first and second. We mentioned the fact of uh, the penalty, and there goes uh, Stenhouse as he is being followed by Elliot Sadler down pit road. Let's send it down to uh, Dr. Jerry Punch. Doc. Ricky Stenhouse said that they're sliding a nose on the car. They're going to make a major air pressure adjustment, both front and rear, to try to fix it. It'll be four tires. They top it off with Sunoco fuel. Very good gas mileage. Remember that for the six car here today at New Hampshire. Vince. There's the 88 of Elliott Sadler, tight rolling the center, loose on exit, a pound up in the right rear and a half pound out of the right front. It's going to be a four-tire stop for Elliott Sadler in the 88. And 16.1 seconds on the clock, and you can see some of the other cars. There's Mike Wallace as he has made his stop, and you're saying, okay, who is the race leader? Well, as the cycle through, there is Kyle Busch, as he is our six different leader. We've had that total and nine lead changes so far today. Right behind him by 7.5 seconds is Kevin Harvick. And the lead going in was 4.2. Five hour energy rapid recap. First, we focus on Danica Patrick, qualified 25th in time trials earlier today, making a return to stock car racing after three months away, focusing on Indy cars. See right side of the screen, Kyle Busch comfortably out in front. Lap seven, the day went tough early for Danica. Just trying to get sorted out. Morgan Shepard goes down in the corner and gets, gets out from underneath him. He gets into the right rear or left rear of Danica takes her out early and puts her down. She had a, you know, she was just trying to find positioning and uh, got taken out. Uh, lost a lap on pit road getting repairs, has since lost another lap, uh, actually another two laps on the racetrack. And uh, for the moment, uh, the driver of the seven cars back in 33rd position, three laps down after getting roughed up in the early going at New Hampshire. For Kyle Busch, he's one of six different drivers that have traded the lead nine times. That number kind of escalated through a series of green flag pit stops we've just completed. Basically, Kyle Busch has led 40 laps, Brad Kozlowski's led 40 laps, and Kevin Harvick has led a handful. Those have been the guys that have paced most of this race. Well, I tell you, it didn't take him long to get right back up front. He's been gone for a couple of weeks, and Brad Kozlowski's been able to go out and pick off a couple of wins and dominate as well as Carl Edwards. Kyle Busch is back and he is up front leading a lot of laps. He looks like the man to beat. Counting down, Marty, the number of laps Kyle Busch leads to tie or surpass Mark Martin to become the all-time lap leader in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. And anytime you can break a Mark Martin record in this series, you've done something. Yeah, absolutely right. He's now led uh, 41 laps. Uh, 97 was the total, or 91 coming in. So he has a uh, about 50 laps to go to break Mark Martin's all-time record. A quick update on uh, Austin Dillon. He got another penalty for speeding after the problems on pit road. He is now four laps down in 35th. There he is. He was 12th before that cycle of pit stops. This is what happened. Well, the cue for the driver to go is when that jack comes down on the left side, but apparently the lug nuts were not on the left rear tire and uh, wasn't time to let it down and they must have been having a problem. But uh, just this is what started the whole chain of events. Uh, they had a penalty for this, and then they had to come down for these other penalties for speeding and uh, just a bad day overall. 14 cars on the lead lap right now as uh, Kyle Busch is setting a blistering pace. His lap time 30.7 the last time by. Let's get uh, more on all this situation of what we just saw. Tim Brewer in the Craftsman Tech Garage. 
thanks guys the jack man controls that pit stop when you come around from the right side over to the left side once you get the car up the jack man he probably glanced back at the left rear tire okay that guy's in pretty good shape he's paying attention to the guy at the left front but the indicator for the driver to leave is when you drop the jack and apparently the left rear guy had an issue between the, the jack guys glance over and that's what got him in trouble but in austin dillon's defense when the car comes down, he's supposed to leave. He did exactly what he's supposed to do as a race car driver. Guys? Yeah, the only problem was when he, when he was serving the penalties, when he got, uh, you know, the, the drive through for going too fast. And that's kind of, it just set up a chain of events that uh, just started their day in a spiral, really. It's uh, too bad because he's got a great car. Here's another guy that's uh, not going where he wants to. The 38 of Jason Leffler, believe it or not, he is about to go a lap down to race leader Kyle Busch. And once that happens, that will put us down to 12 cars on the lead lap. That gives you an idea just how good Kyle uh -oh, is right got now. A caution here, caution is out. Trouble. The 6 of Ricky Stenhouse and the 10 of Taylor Malsom. Uh, right side, pretty heavy, Shen. He was ninth place for Ricky Stenhouse at the time of this crash here on lap 94. Yeah, there are flames underneath there, Taylor. I think it might be uh, advisable to find the nearest fire hydrant. Well, he's got a lot of sparks coming out from the car. You can see the right front control arm yeah, is just broken. Take it to the garage, yeah, they're done for a while here. Yeah, it's a shame Ricky Stenhouse was doing a nice job today, having a good solid run, which is exactly what he and his team needed with that City Financial Ford. Yeah, this is the last thing they needed was to be in another accident because he was running well. Right now he is able to get it uh, refired and has uh, enough power and enough clearance in all the wheel wells to hastily get it back around. That big lead of Kyle Busch's. And let's go back and talk about that. When he came into the pits the first time under green, 4.2 seconds, he comes back out after the cycle through at 7.3. Well, that's a, yeah, I'm sorry, Dale. That's probably a combination of doing an excellent job of getting off the racetrack for Kyle Busch and back out. And his crew do, and his crew has really all year been one of the best, if not the best, crew on pit road. And I was going to say he does that week in and week out, and that makes a huge difference. And that really pumps up the pit crew too when you have a driver that does all of that, right, Andy? Uh, when you got a driver like Kyle Busch, everything he does yeah, pumps you that's up. That's right. Well, good news for Jason Leffler. He was able to stay on the lead lap, and the lucky dog from Aaron's is going to go to the 27th of Justin Lawson. So that'll give us 13 back on the lead lap. Here comes our race leader Kyle Busch followed by Kevin Harvick also Joey Logano. And as we get set up for the triple pits let's start it off with Dave Burns. Kyle Busch will take some Sunoco fuel the car a little free in if anything he said so they'll make just a slight air pressure adjustment uh, for Kyle at this point the 20 of Joey Logano on the other hand he said his car was edgy loose off it never tightened up on that run so they're going to make some adjustments for the 20 Vince the 33 of Kevin Harvick they were having the discussion whether or not to take two tires or four they have settled on four the pit stops always a hot button for this team a lot of pressure to perform well in the pits for Kevin Harvick they've done so on this stop. Nationwide insurance race off pit road. You can see Joey Logano and Justin Allgaier. Two tires and no tires gives them first and second off pit road. All right, let's go back and show you exactly what happened, why we're under this second caution here, just five laps short of the midway and making this race official with a threat of rain. It involved, well, it's just the tail end of it. Can't tell who actually caused it, but it's the 10th crash for. Stenhouse in 14 starts here in 2010. And that's what's left of Malsum's machine. He's okay. Welcome back to the New England 200. Make sure to go to NASCAR.com for all your latest NASCAR information. The second caution caused by the two car crash. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. back out on the track. He's now in 22nd position, one lap down. And remember, he was ninth when this happened. Let's uh, check in and find out why Brad Keselowski did not pit. Vince? Well, the uh, first two, Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick came. Brad Keselowski did not. Paul, what was behind the decision to keep him out? Well, our, we're getting really good fuel mileage again this weekend, and um, we had pitted a couple laps later, and then with, with only about 10 green flag laps on the tires, we, uh, we feel like that was the right call for us right now. We weren't in a window where we could make it on one more stop. So, Thanks, Paul. Marty? All right, uh, let's get seven wave arounds. Mike Wallace, Sean Case, Brendan Gaughan, Mike Bliss, Colin Brown, uh, Morgan Shepard, and Jason Keller. That gives us 17 
on the lead lap. So Brad Keselowski, Elliott Sadler did not pit. You think this strategy is going to work there, crew chief? Well, I think it's the right strategy for this time of the race. And, uh, you know, Kyle Busch has had the best car in the long run. This is the best way to get track position. How about the Verizon Wireless Custom Checks Champion to 43776? You can have exclusive champion chats from our NASCAR Now Roundtable of Experts. Well, one thing you can hang your hat on, if it does rain, we are official next time by and Brad Keselowski's team would look like a bunch of geniuses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they would. <laughs> All right, let's reset it for you. It's Keselowski and Sadler up front, and Keselowski's taking the low line inside. Then it's Justin Allgaier, Joey Logano, Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch, Carl Edwards in seventh, Stephen Wallace eighth, Trevor Bain, and Paul Menard rounding out your top ten. Pace car is pulled off. We're on the hammer. We're back to green flag racing here at New Hampshire. Keslowski opens up about a three car length lead while right behind him Joey Logano's looking to go under the 88 of Elliott Sadler. Well there's some heavy duty racing going on right behind Keslowski. Kyle Busch wants through. Yeah and if I'm Kyle Busch I feel pretty good that I got four tires and only came out there in fifth and what we've seen long green flag runs so far that my co we've made the right decision. Well this race is now official so uh, it doesn't matter what the weather does. This one's going to end sometime today. Right now, a lot of guys are driving like it's the last 10 laps. This is their opportunity to gain a few spots. This thing gets strung out. It's really hard to pass. I mean, we saw a while ago Kyle Busch put everybody down a lap except the top 14. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Did you see the Roush cars just zipping around high and low? As, as we said, there's a lot of racing going on here at New Hampshire. Battle for third between the Joe Gibbs racing teammates. You got Kyle Busch right in front of the 20 of Joey Logano, and there is second place, Elliott Sadler. Now remember, Sadler stayed out. Yeah, is, Elliott's doing a nice job in uh, his Dale Jr. car for the first time. They stayed out and looked like his car didn't fall off much, and that was probably somewhat behind the decision that they made that uh, they're not that great on new tires, but the, the car stays with them. And yeah, we're talking about crew chief decisions. I really do agree with you on the 18. I think they made the right call to get that car in, get four tires. And I think the right call for the 22 was to stay out because uh, they didn't really have the track position, and it's it's worth a lot. It's actually worth speed. If you can look at, Ke I mean, Keselowski already has almost a two-second lead since the restart. Well, and you saw that uh, Kyle Busch has already cleared the 88. Here comes the 20 also as uh, Logano goes through. Here comes Carl Edwards following and Kevin Harvick right behind as well. While this is going on, let's find out what happened with Taylor Malsom and Ricky Stenhouse. Uh, Doc, you've caught up with Taylor? I have back at the garage area, Marty. His uh, Toyota spinning on lap 95. Uh, Taylor, what happened? I don't know. We're just trying to run laps. You know, I uh, haven't been here much. I haven't been in these cars much. I'm just trying to get situated with them and figure them out and we just got dumped by the six I think uh, nothing are doing the guys did a good job of uh, giving me a car I could race with and just trying to log laps what we're doing. Why would he dump you. I don't know. I, I got to ask him I guess. OK. Not very happy back here in the garage Marty. Well, we'll have to wait to talk to Ricky Stenhouse. He's still out there right now for Taylor top 15 finishes in two of his three prior NASCAR nationwide series starts. All this action still going on. Paul Menard's in the thick of it along with Kevin Harvick and the 12 of Justin Allgaier. Trevor Bain trying to stick his nose in it as well in the 99. And we're seeing another situation here where Kevin Harvick's car is just not that good on fresh tires. It takes him time, but he's in the middle of a lot of cars that are pretty good. But well, we saw that in the first run, Andy. He slid back and then all of a sudden started coming back about 10 more laps. Yeah, but I'm afraid that on this run he's losing a little bit too much ground and too many spots. It's taken a lot of time to get by Paul Menard. Paul took two tires the last time he came in. And you can see, I mean, it didn't, not really hurting Menard. I mean, he's still running fast. Harvick on the low side. There's Allgaier, the 99 as well. And here comes Reed Sorensen. Whoa, and Reed got a little loose at the tail end of that line. Yeah, there's just no banking down on that part of the racetrack. You go in there and your car just takes off the front end. Won't get much grip there. And you have to really be careful. Make sure you don't get into the guy and create a problem for yourself and someone else. That's a six all the way through 10th position on your screen right now. We'll tell you you're not missing anything up front. Brad Keselowski leads Kyle Busch by 1.6 seconds. 
and sort of has straightened out here for a moment. Let's go back to the front and show you that's what it looks like as Brad continues to lead. Now he has led 52 laps. Kyle has led 46. We've had six different leaders and 11 lead changes. And you see that we're working 108 laps. Let's talk about what's going to happen on ESPN2 with the Summit Racing Equipment NHRA Nationals qualifying tonight at 7 Eastern, the finals tomorrow at 7 Eastern, then NASCAR now tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m. Eastern, that also on ESPN2. Then next week, NASCAR Nationwide Series, the Subway Jalapeno 250 at Daytona, Friday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. And the Eyes Out IndyCar Series at Watkins Glen, Sunday afternoon on ABC at 3.30 Eastern. While we're in commercial break, as you uh, ride along with uh, the leaders up front in this race and you can see Kyle Busch is getting closer to Brad Keselowski. We'll tell you that Stephen Wallace had an unscheduled pit stop had a problem with the left rear. He, he was 13th. He has now dropped all the way down to 20th one lap down and he's coming off top 10 finishes in his last three races Vince. Well, it's really unfortunate because Steven was having a solid run, as you noted, Marty, but he had contact with the 98 car and it caused a little bit of left rear damage just behind that left rear tire was getting into the tire a little bit. Tire started to go down. Steven had to come in to uh, have that replaced and have that left rear, t uh, left rear fender pulled out a little bit. So a green flag stop very costly for the 66. And right behind him is Ricky Stenhouse Jr. who is that is a battle for position. They're now running 19th and 20th. But here's what happened just a few laps ago when the Stenhouse was trying to get under Danica. Big C's down on that part of the racetrack again. He tries to power up right there, and the front end just doesn't stick, and he gets into the left rear of Danica. Neither one suffered any serious damage on that, able to continue. I'm sure part of that is a little frustration, too, over what had happened earlier. So the, had a good run going, but uh, created a caution. So the strategy so far by Brad Keselowski's team has paid off. He is still maintaining the lead, although Kyle is picking away at it. Oh, yeah, I mean, Kyle's going to get the lead if it goes green long enough. We'll see here. We'll check the speeds at the line. And definitely uh, Kyle Busch is the fastest car we've seen so far. But right there, that lap, it looked like Joey Logano. And then Harvick. Give you an idea. Harvick's four seconds behind the race lead. Yeah, it was still a good decision by Keselowski's team because they were running, uh, I think, fourth when they made that pit stop when the other leaders made it. And they're still, you know, they're going to lose this spot, but they'll still be right there second or third and probably till they get inside their pit window to make that last pit stop. If you weren't with us at the beginning of the race, the longer the run goes, the better that 18 car gets. And that's uh, bad news for everybody else in this field because, again, here we are starting to get into a longer run. Yeah, but if he looks in his mirror, he's going to see his teammate back there, and his car was a lot the same way. He just started a little further back and didn't start the race off very good, but they've worked on that 20 car, and so I think he's going to have to deal with him, his teammate, before this race is over. We talked about at the beginning of this race, 23 different winners in 23 races. Kyle Busch in second place is a former winner, one of six, but Brad Keselowski in first, Joey Logano in second, would make the streak continue at 24 if they were able to win. Kyle just keeps chipping away at it. It's now down to two tenths of a second. Well, he's there. He's at that point right up behind Kozlowski where he's probably getting a little push uh, from that, you know, just the arrow. Uh, dynamic part of this when you catch another car you just lose a little of that downforce on the nose. Well earlier we saw Brad wave uh, Kyle by you think he'll do that now. Yeah I think he's going <laughs> to give him that spot here in just a minute. I, I don't think that he's going to press the issue. They've accomplished what they wanted to. They've got their track position back here now. So everything's going good and whenever the caution comes out they're going to be in position to make their four tire change and then race for the win at the end of this. Well they're going down the back stretch right now heading into three and they're side by side Kyle takes the position again so it'll be our 12th different lead change and here comes Joey and you can bet that he's aware that these are the cars and team that would not happy with him after last week so he's going to give these guys a little bit more room right now too I would imagine Top. I, think, I think Kyle's putting a little more pressure you know, for this lead he went ahead and took it because he needed to do that he looks in his mirror and sees that 20 car coming he's probably more worried about Joey Logano than he was about Keselowski and you can see Kyle starting to open up the gap and between Bush and Keselowski they've led all but nine laps today and remember Kyle trying to close in on that all time record for laps led in a career that's now held by Mark Martin battle for second side by side Logano 
is looking underneath and it looks like he's going to take the spot away. These Gibbs cars again are just really set up well. The cars don't fall off a lot so they're not abusing the tires and the drivers are doing their jobs. Well between uh, Joe Gibbs Racing and Team Penske they've won nine of the last ten races. Look who's in the top three spots. Does this surprise you? For all your latest NASCAR information, you're looking at the race for the lead. Kyle Busch leading Joey Logano 18 and 20, respectively, for Joe Gibbs Racing. Uh, this race last year, Logano dominated much of the day. Kyle passed him with 35 laps to go. Can the kid turn the tables? Boy, it looks like the tables may be turned today. Who knows? But I'll tell you what, don't forget about the car in third place. Brad Keselowski, I think he's just sitting there riding. One more pit stop, he may be able to go get him. And Kyle Busch still chipping away at that Mark Martin record for a most laps led ever in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. We'll keep an eye on the race for the lead. If it heats up, we'll take you to it. First, we want to check on some of the other cars running a little bit deeper in the field. Dropping all the way back to 10th place, Reed Sorensen in that 32 car, Doc. And Reed's doing double duty this weekend, driving the 83 car for the Red Bull team in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. He'll be in that car, by the way, the next three cup races today. Trouble with the front end on that 32 car. They made a wedge adjustment, a track bar adjustment, an air pressure adjustment, and they still, the front end is chattering now and will not turn in the corner. He can go to lap 173 if he has to. Right now, they're in their fuel window to pit and go the rest of the way. Dave. Doc, his teammate Jason Leffler has had kind of on both extremes for his race car. It was really tight at the beginning of the race, but it was really loose on the last run. He said, you know what? It was actually better when it was tighter. I'd like it to be balanced, but uh, if we could just get it toward that, that'd be great. But I'll take a tighter car. I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, tighter car over the looser car. As for the 27 of Justin Lofton, he's been getting a pretty good run through the day. The brakes are holding up a little bit tight in the center right now. And one thing that has changed, Greg Biffle has been speaking up a little bit more as far as driver coaching this young driver around this flat one mile oval. Biffle not so vocal in the early part of the race but now really giving some uh, driving coaching to Justin Lofton. Doc. And back behind them Brendan gone. We told you he's coming off back to back top five finishes for the first time ever in his NASCAR Nationwide Series career. He dodged the bullet about five laps ago. He radioed so I think I got a left front tire going down. Turns out it was some debris on the tire. It started to slip and slide. It's gone away. Now they can go to lap 160 on fuel. He said right now the car still needs more side bike. Dave. Doc, Mike Bliss won't be able to go quite that far in the 40 car. He was one of the cars that stayed out and took the wave around the last time. I just talked to his crew chief, said the car is pretty balanced, but they would uh, also like to get a little bit more speed out of it. But again, they'll have to pit a little sooner than some because they stayed out last time, Doc. And how about the effort for Colin Brown in the 16 car coming off back to back top 10 finishes in an 11th last week at Road America despite being in the pea gravel late in the race. Quite a comeback. He is trying to just finish races and get better and better finishes right now. He said the car simply is a little tight off the turns. They can go to lap 170 as well on fuel. Dave. Jason Keller making his 504th start of the nationwide series. Just talked to his crew chief Brian Berry. Car's been a little bit tight today. They also stayed out and took the wave around. And remember, when you do that, you cannot pit, so they didn't get a chance to work on it during that round of pit stops. Alan? Keller is last on the lead lap in 16th position. Up front, it is still Kyle Busch leading Joey Logano. Only two cautions in this race so far. The pattern is we're going to have one more, yep. but it's not one of those late, late, late cautions if history holds and the numbers track true today here at New Hampshire. Hmm. Well, the 2010 FIFA World Cup continues with the round of 16 on ESPN and ABC tomorrow. First on ESPN at 9.30 a.m. Eastern, it is Germany and England. Then on ABC at 2 Eastern, Argentina takes on Mexico. The 2010 FIFA World Cup on ESPN and ABC tomorrow. And all you tuning in after today's game, for those of you that did not watch, we will show you the bad news. America lost. Ghana for the second World Cup in a row eliminates the United States. The final score. Two to one. Let's talk about the battle for the race lead now as we are now working lap number 140. Kyle Busch has a bout oh that much over his teammate Joey Logano and they have pulled away from Brad Keselowski by five seconds guys. Yeah with all this room that they have on the other cars Dale I got to think that Joey 
feels like he's got maybe got a better car. He's been locked to the rear bumper of this 18. And it makes me wonder whether he's just trying to assess what he has here with this 18 and what he's got to do to beat him. Yeah, that looks a lot like that. He he runs up to his bumper, but it may be more that he's losing the front end like you were talking about a while ago. It's a very difficult place to pass, especially when two cars are pretty equal. Coming up on lap traffic to the 89 of Morgan Shepard. Five times in 2009, these two finished one and two. Notice where Kyle finished ahead of Joey in the one and only time that he won this one two matchup was right here at New Hampshire. That's like Alice said, maybe he can turn the table right here. And remember, Kyle would become our first repeat winner in 24 races here at New Hampshire. Joey Logano could be our 24th different winner. On board right now with Stephen Wallace. Uh, we told you about the problems he had. He's running 18th. He needs to get to around one more car. Tony Raines to get the lucky dog position. He's one lap down, but a little bit earlier, uh, it, it looked like he was trying to find his way through all this. <laughs> Hello. That's Robert Richardson Jr. Is uh, nobody really had a serious damage. A little fender damage on the 23, but everybody else seems to survive. And there is Steven. Like we said, he's got to get past Tony Raines right now. And he is running quicker laps than Tony. And then he's got to hope for a caution to get back on the lead lap. And why is that important? Well, there's only 16 cars on the lead lap right now. And if we had a late green white checker, you're right back in this because you're only in row eight. That's right. And the only way that Steven Wallace can race those cars in the top 16 is to get on the same lap with him. And there's the 34, just a couple of cars ahead. So that is the race for the lucky dog position. Tony Raines has it, and the 66 of Stephen Wallace wants it. They're both going under the 39 of Charles Lewandowski. Lewandowski wasn't really supposed to be in this race. Peyton Sellers was disqualified, fuel issue, and he's out there and still running strong. And there's the difference between first and second. Back here at New Hampshire, we are under our third caution now. As you can see, everybody at Pit Road has opened already, and the race leaders, Mike Bliss, uh, has an engine problem. Don't know exactly what the issue was, but he was 13th. Let's uh, go down to Pit Road, Dave Burns. Leader Kyle Bush is in there talking about two tires. Kyle says, I don't know what it'll take for me to get away from him, but I just can't seem to do it till about 40 laps. They do take two. 20 car of Joey Logano, they're talking about two tires as well. That'll be the same. He gets down off pit road behind his teammate, Vince. The 33 of Kevin Harvick, you see they're making a four tire change on the 33. Harvick says the balance is good, but he just can't go anywhere in traffic. That's the problem for Harvick. The 22 of Brad Keselowski, he says it just gets tighter and tighter as they go. They made a four-tire change with a track bar adjustment. So the two-tire, four-tire strategy with 52 laps remaining here. And both Joe Gibbs cars, you take a look at the Nationwide Endurance Race off pit road, hold station. Edwards, Harvick, Sadler, Menard, Algar pick up one each. New England 200. That is what uh, the team is working on with Mike Bliss, as our old late friend Benny Parsons would have said. He blowed up. Yep. What it looks like here. You see, yeah, but Bliss kept saying he felt like he had oil pressure, didn't know exactly what it was, but he's in there trying to diagnose it. Our Aaron's lucky dog goes to the 34 of Tony Raines. Yes, he did hold off Stephen Wallace, and uh, but Wallace was one of several seven wave arounds. Kenny Wallace, Danica Patrick, Willie Allen, Stephen Wallace, Ricky Stenhouse, Eric McClure, Michael Annette, and race leader Kyle Busch and Joey Logano head for turn one. Yeah, first time we've seen the leader choose that outside lane. To restart in today. Kyle yep. Busch trying to see if he can make it work. Kevin Harvick going to try the high side. Not going to get any help there for the race lead. Look at the freight train behind him. And boy, the 32 Reed Sorensen, he's getting eaten up right now. Two cars have easily gotten past. Here comes Allgaier. See Harvick behind these two leaders. And here we go, a pass for the lead. Now Logano's got the advantage off turn four. Drag race down the front straightaway, side by side. Harvick's got the best seat in the house. Kyle trying to take it back. Harvick's also got the best tires. He changed four tires that last stop, and these two uh, cars took two tires. Carl Edwards right in this mix as well. And these four cars are opening up a gap over the two Penske teammates, Brad Keselowski and Justin Allgaier. You know what you're seeing right here is two cars that are on four tires, Carl Edwards and Kevin Harvick, against the two Gibbs cars that are on just two tires that last stop. Now that was really surprising, those two guys being the leaders. I would have thought that they might have taken four there. 
because they weren't going to lose many spots and they've shown that they've been able to pass and it might have forced the other guys maybe to take two tires and then they would have been in a better position but well they've had the best cars all day the Gibbs cars have by far been the best cars and they probably felt like if they just didn't give up that track position even if they were just a little off with those left sides they could still hold the lead and they still might I mean they're still first and second first place Kyle Busch has opened up a bit of breathing room by about four tenths of a second. Yeah look behind here Brad Keselowski lost five spots on pit road with a really a bad pit stop 19 seconds plus yeah, they had a problem. They had a problem with a jack. Now let's listen to his radio before the pit stop. This is it Picker you can do this one. I'm feeling it right here. Get me out right here. I think I can do this. And then here is the end result of the pit stop. Yeah, everything's going pretty smooth. They come around to the left side. The Jackman slips a little bit. He doesn't get the car high enough. You can see the left rear guys are saying, get it up, get it up. It's not high enough to get the tire on. That's just a, you know, the absolute worst possible time for that kind of mistake. So now the driver has to try and pick up the team, and he's doing all he can right now. There's the pit crew comparisons. He's gone from... Uh, yeah, you can see right here, just looking, 19 second stop, lost him uh, five spots. Yeah. All on the left side. Since they've thrown the green flag, though, he's been slicing and dicing through all of this. He's made short work of those cars that were around him and in front of him. Well, he came in third, went back out seventh, and now he's worked his way back to fifth. And there is the top five, in fact, the top six right there with Trevor Bain also in this mix. He has slowly started to work his way yeah. towards this front. Yeah, Trevor Bain doing a nice job. I spoke with him in the garage area the other day as we see Carl Edwards coming here. Yeah, uh, Kevin Harvey just slipped down and turned one and two. See Edwards taking advantage. Talking about Trevor Bain, though, he was really excited. He really likes this. He has probably had more time on this racetrack running the, the uh, East Series here over the years and uh, really enjoys the challenge that this track presents. Looks like he's got his car pretty good, too. Brad Keselowski, whoa, they come awfully close head they head into one, but Keselowski on the low side, trying to clear the 33, comes up on him a little bit. Oh, and just barely Harvick tries to stay, and he oh, is still out there. He's still, they bang a little bit on each other. I tell you, Brad better be careful right there with Mr. Harvick. He can see a big chunk of his points lead go down the drain. Right now, you mentioned the points. It's exactly where we started, 237, based on where the two top contenders are. There goes the 60 with Brad Keselowski right behind. All right, let's get an update on uh, Kevin Harvick's situation, Vince. Well, you just saw that little bit of contact with the 22. Harvick came on the radio right after that, but he did not have harsh words for Keselowski. In fact, he just said, I'm loose at the beginning of the run. It gets so much better, but early stages of the run, the car's really loose. That's what he's dealing with right now. All right, thanks for the update, Vince. 41 laps to go. Seven away from another record. That's what Kyle Busch is. If he leads seven more, it becomes the all-time lap leader in series history. Pass it, Mark Martin. Another record for Kyle Busch. And that's all he needs to become the all-time lap leader in NASCAR Nationwide Series history. His margin right now, a half a second over teammate Joey Logano. Carl Edwards is two seconds behind. Brad Keselowski is in fourth. Kevin Harvick rounds out the top five. And every time we think he's probably done about everything he can in a series, here he comes with another chance at the record book. Yeah, just incredible. And it's going to be in 45 less races than what Mark Martin took to do that. So just amazing. He set or tied nine records just last year alone. And uh, here we come now as he's now led 91. As, uh, there it is. He has 8,083 laps led, a new all-time record. Sorry, Mark. It was uh, a worthy adversary, though, as, he's taken the, as he has dazzled us with some brilliant moves on the racetrack. Right now he's dazzling his teammate Joey Logano with a yeah. good view of his back bumper. Let's go back a little bit further in the field. Remember we talked about uh, two drivers that were sort of trying to rehabilitate their careers. Well there they are running nose to tail Reed Sorensen and Elliot Sadler. Doc. And you heard Dale Jarrett talk about uh, the beginning of the show, how he went back and ran the what was in the Bush series and was able to get the ride with Joe Gibbs and then take his career back to the top of the Daytona 500 win. That's what Reed Sorensen is trying to do with the 32 car. He has run 10 races this year in that car, and he has got eight top 10 finishes, four 
more top five. A lot of people say, well, this young man can drive. That's why he was hired this week to come in and fill in the 83 car. So he will drive the uh, Red Bull Sprint Cup car the next three events and will also run as many as four more cup races with this nationwide team. Vince. Well, and a variety of different drivers have been in the 88. Uh, Jamie McMurray was in for Junior Motorsports for a while. Uh, Ron Fellows had a good run second last week at Road America. Elliott Sadler in this week for the first of 10 nationwide series races. And Sadler's also run some truck races, a handful for Kevin Harvick, and has performed very well. Elliott says it's been a big confidence booster for him, and he really wants to do well in this Junior Motorsports car. He and Dale Jr. have been friends since their late model days as teenagers. He said, I want to run well for Junior. He's got a top 10 run going right now. All right, thank you guys. All right, leader is in race traffic right now. There is Kyle and he's got the 050. Willie Allen, Michael and Eddie's already gotten around. Now, just a few moments ago, the 05 and 15 had their own issues. Yeah, they've been racing really hard just before these leaders caught them. I don't know what, uh, what's going on here, but you see them getting together a little bit on the back straight away. Oh, a couple of times. But Kyle Bush is glad they sorted it out before he got by him. Now the 15 and that's lucky he doesn't have a cut left rear tire out of that exchange, but everything's good. And Kyle just when they get in traffic, he just makes such short work of, of whatever these guys are doing, and he just opens that lead back up. Speaking of our leader, there is Kyle Bush. He's coming up on Mike Wallace. Mike uh, has uh, three laps down, 26th place, and also Danica Patrick. She is right now 31st, four laps behind, soon to be five. Doc, uh, give us an update on the seven. Marty, we're talking at the top of the show that all they wanted her to do was come to this very, very difficult racetrack and get laps and get better each and every lap. And that is indeed what she's done. That's a little shut early on with Morgan Shepard. She has been very impressive the last 60 or 70 laps, picking up her lap time. She got here in practice on Friday. She had trouble backing off going in the corner. She was giving up about a second entering one, entering three. She has gotten better and better. Very impressed uh, Tony Uri Jr. and his crew and what Danica Patrick has done and what she had learned here at uh, New Hampshire today. Thanks, Doc. And you can see right now still uh, 31st on the board with uh, now oh, 27 laps to go. So we're almost to the 175 mark. I'm sure our race leader would love to have this race over at lap 175, but we're going to lap 200. Now we've got a caution flag out. You can see the results of what's happened to Mark Green. He was running 33rd. It was a long day and it just got a lot longer. Yeah, by looking at this car, I would say that he went in the corner and didn't have any air in that right front tire. See right there, man, that is a hard lick. Flatten the right side of that thing. So as I said, uh, actually I should correct myself. It's our fourth caution. The fewest cautions we've ever had here is three. Um, take it to the garage, Mark. Take it. And you hit hard here. Yeah, you do. You don't realize the speed that you're carrying, and you don't, even though the wall's out there, you're running down on the bottom, you just can't get the car slowed down, especially in a situation like that where it probably blew going into the corner. So it'll tighten up this race lead one more time. We'll step aside briefly. Remember, we've got 22 laps to go to decide it. Does Joe Gibbs Racing win it? If so, which one? Here under our fourth caution at New Hampshire, we can tell you Michael Annette's going to get the lucky dog. And remember the wave around for Stephen Wallace and Ricky Stenhouse, among others, it paid dividends. They are back on the lead lap. We talked about a little bit of history heading be to the break. Here are the numbers Kyle Busch is looking at. He already has passed for the all-time lap lead. He can tie Kevin Harvick if he wins this with 36. Still has a way to go to top Mark Martin's 48 wins. How about our in-race reporter? Carl Edwards, uh, let's talk to him. Carl, Dale Jarrett, have a copy? Yeah, I got you, Dale. All right, man, didn't want you to think we'd forgot about you. Said we were going to talk to you. We talked in the pre-race show, and I asked you the question, were you up to where the Gibbs cars and the Penske cars were? You're right in the middle of them. Have you got anything for them? I don't know, man. Uh, I was just telling Drew, you know, the 18's got two tires, I guess. The 20's real fast. Maybe they'll start racing real hard. I could steal this thing from them. That'd be great. Uh, we've been really good on uh, on restarts with this Copart Fusion. 
And Drew's really done a good job in the pits, uh, you know, getting the car like I want it. So I'd say our balance is perfect. It's just up to me and uh, good fortune if we can get this thing. Is there one place that you are struggling with your car any, or you see them beating you? Um, we're struggling just a little bit, uh, a little bit off the corner, just a little bit driving off the corner. Uh, the car is real good in the center, and it's pretty good in, and um, just, uh, just see how this double file restart goes. You know, you just never know what's going to happen here. Okay, man. Good luck. Thanks for talking with us, buddy. DJ, thank you. All right, let's reset it for you. It looks like race leader Kyle Busch is going to take the outside again with Joey Logano, then Carl in row two with Brad Keselowski, Harvick and Bain, and then Allgaier seventh and Menard eighth. Let's quickly go over the wall with our man Ben Steger, the rear tire carrier on the 62 of Brendan Gong. All right, here we go. We're going to pit this South Point Toyota. Mike's going to take a look. Now song. Put the new tire on. He's got the tire. Go to the left side. Mike's going to hit these. Put the new one on. Four, five, finish. Good stop, boy. Action in the pits, and we're getting ready to have action back out on the track as the green flag flies. And whoa, Joey Logano gets a terrible restart. Yeah, really spun the tires right there. Well, it's a big break for Keselowski, though. You see, now he's right on Kyle Busch's rear bumper. Look yeah. at Trevor Bain on the high side, guys, as he takes advantage. Yeah, really hurt Carl Edwards' chances right there, too, because he got trapped in behind Logano. 18 laps to go here at New Hampshire. And the big beneficiary was Kyle Busch. Behind him, it's two abreast. Joey Logano, oh, look out. He slides up towards the 22. Yeah, that 20 car is really pushing hard right here, trying to get by. Here comes Carl Edwards. Edwards down low is going to take the spot. Trevor Bain's got the inside track right now as well on Logano. Logano is going the wrong direction. I don't know what happened to Logano on that start, but he just did not get going. No, and this is the worst thing. It, these cars with these tires up here on this racetrack makes it so hard. You really have to make sure you keep plenty of heat in them and get them really cleaned off. And Joey just did not make that happen on this start, uh, before the start of the uh, race right there. You were on board momentarily with Carl Edwards. He could not get underneath the 22 of Brad Keselowski. And it has allowed Kyle Busch to open up about an eight-tenth of a second lead. Yeah, he was loving what he was seeing in his mirror. Oh, yeah. As if he needed any help to stay out front. That's Reed Sorensen in the Dollar General car just a little bit further back where we first see our side-by-side -side action. That's with Kevin Harvick as they go down through the corner. Well, Harvick has really struggled on these restarts today. His car just does not like these cold tires. How about Colin Brown? They're going to try three wide there for a moment. Give Brown a shout out. He has had some struggles early in the season. He is 12th right now. And remember, he has had uh, his last three finishes of 10th, 10th, and 11th. So the 16 seems to be coming in the right direction finally. You can see some of these cars, Brendan Gaughan being one of those that came in and got tires making their way forward now. Elliot Sadler stayed out. You can see he's paying the price. Yeah, the 16 was stayed out there. So these guys are, are seeing that uh, maybe a wrong decision there, Andy. Yeah, I was uh, kind of questioning that because once you get about, you know, 10th in line there, doesn't make any sense not to make a pit stop right there. Boy, Jason Leffler right tucked up underneath the 16 as they went into the corner. Here they come out of it at the far end. Meanwhile, there's what it looks like up front. Holding station is Kyle Busch. Second place, Brad Keselowski, Carl Edwards in third. There's the gap as you see it all the way back through the top six spots. Keselowski beat Kyle Busch the last lap by just a little bit. 13 laps to go. We were worried about the weather. It doesn't look like it's going to be a problem. We're going to go to the finish here. On board with Justin Allgaier, who's running in sixth, and Trevor Bain with a great run going in the 99. Bain's career best of six came at Las Vegas back in March. He finished 10th last week on the road course at Road America. He could do his career best one better if he can hold station in fifth. Little back further is the 32 of Sorensen and Harvick. And you can see right there, Brendan Gums caught this group too. Paul Menard's in that. You don't want to be the first car that in line or, the, or actually the last car that did not pit because these cars you get tires that you're just a, you're just so vulnerable to them and you start losing spots and the, all the rest of them come by you. 
can see right here. Brendan Gaunt making the most of his tires that he just got on pit road. Harvick taking a look under the 32. Thinks better of it. Falls back in line. 11 laps to go. How about the 66 of Stephen Wallace going toe to toe with the 38 of Jason Leffler, and that is for 13th on the track. Vince. Well, it's been a nice job for Stephen Wallace. Remember, he had that problem with the left rear going down, and they had to come in and make that green flag pit stop. But otherwise, it's been a very solid day. It's not going to be the top five that he wanted, as you see him making the pass on uh, Leffler, the 38. But it's a solid effort for Stephen, even though the result's not going to show it. Rusty Wallace has invested in this team, and it's starting to pay off. They made the switch to Toyota. They've done testing. They've taken advantage of, of the Toyota uh, opportunities to go to the wind tunnel. Their car are better. A lot of positives happening in that 66 and 62 garage, and we're starting to see the results, even though I know Steven's not going to get the number he was looking for today. Oh, and he got that wave around all important back on lap 151, and then this last caution allowed him to get in, get fuel and tires, and stay on the lead lap. Yeah, talking about those guys, though, that shows the improvement of this race team, how much they improved, because they, even though they've had some things happen today, they've been able to rebound, where in the past they didn't have their cars fast enough to do that, so it's a big improvement for them. Carl Edwards and Joey Logano, the best battle we have going in the top ten right now. You can see how close they are. Both of them are about eight-tenths of a second behind Brad Keselowski. There you see the gap between first, second, and then third and fourth. And now we have eight laps to go. Can Kyle Busch become the first repeat winner in 24 races at New Hampshire? Or does Brad Keselowski find something to keep that streak alive? Well, he's been actually just barely beating Kyle Busch. I mean, a couple of hundredths of a second a lap uh, for four or five, six laps in a row. And he's looking, he's trying to make a little ground here. Two of Brad's three wins in 2010 were last lap passes. Let's get more from Dave Byrne. And Marty, if you talk to Jason Ratcliffe about why the 18 has been so successful, he says it's the evaluation of our program. We have a clear understanding of what works and what doesn't, and we're very seldom lost. And one more thing, they watch tape. Imagine a Joe Gibbs team watching tape to get better, and Jason Ratcliffe did that again this week as he pre prepared for New Hampshire to try to see if he could break the streak of different winners. That's a really good way to try to refresh yourself. You know, you go to so many racetracks during the year, sometimes you kind of forget how, what problems you had at, say, at a New Hampshire last year. Best thing to do, look at those tapes, and it all comes back to you, and then you can be better prepared when you get here. How about the latest from the 22 camp, Vince? Well, a spotter, uh, Joey Meyer, has come on the radio to Brad Keselowski, and he's told him the lap times the last couple of laps. Brad's been just a little bit quicker than Kyle, and he says he's getting bigger in your mirror or in your window. I know he is as Keselowski starts to close the gap. Remember at the beginning during the uh, countdown show, we talked with crew chief Paul Wolf, who used to race here as a driver, and now he's Brad Keselowski's crew chief, and the things that they have done as a crew chief that he feels maybe gives them a little bit of an advantage because of his racing history. They just came on the radio a few moments ago, said perfect corner, Brad. And that's exactly the kind of things that Paul Wolf has been helping Brad Keselowski with in this transition here at New Hampshire. This time by four laps remaining. Brad Keselowski, if he has anything left, has got to find it. It is a seven tenth of a second lead. He's putting everything on the line, and so is Kyle Busch. They ran identical lap times last time by. Yeah, it could possibly take a caution right here to jam things up again and make it interesting. Now, I thought on that last restart, that was going to be Joey Logano's opportunity was to maybe keep Kyle from, from winning this race, was to get out front then. It's like he tried a little too hard when he spun his tires. One of the guys we thought could be in the hunt for the first repeat winner trophy would have been that guy right there, the 33 of Kevin Harvick. But right now, he's got his hands full with Justin Allgaier, and that's a battle for sixth. Well, Harvick's now made his way back. His car just will not go on the cold tires. Once they cool down here, and even with the air pressure bit up, when you're riding around under caution, those air pressures go down some, and that's just not what Kevin's car and, and what he likes, so it takes him time to get back going. Meanwhile, back up front, as you see the view from outside those two, here comes with now two laps remaining. The gap is eight-tenths of a second, so I guess uh, Kyle said it's time to pick up the pace a little bit because he just put another tenth of a second gap on second place, Brad Keselowski. Edwards and Logano, they are separated literally by a bumper. 
Joe Logano is going to be disappointed with this race because he really had, I thought he had a shot at Kyle Busch. And, you know, that restart, just uh, that one little mistake is going to keep taking away from a chance to win. White flag now out for our race leader, Joey Logano, trying to salvage at least third place for the team. But right now, it's all about his teammate, Kyle Busch. He's already set one record today, leading a career-high lap total, passing Mark Martin down into turn number three for the final time. There's nothing in doubt right now as long as nothing happens. Coming out of turn number four with his sixth win of the win and the first repeat winner at New Hampshire. It's and you are the all-time lap leader in the Nationwide Series. Good job, brother. I appreciate you. Appreciate you guys. Thank you very, very much. Brad Keselowski second, Carl Edwards third, Joey Logano fourth, Trevor Bain with a great run, a new career best for him in fifth. Then it's Allgaier Harvick, Sorensen Menard, and Brendan Gaughan rounding out the top ten. Dave, it's all yours. Uh, Jason Ratcliffe looking down to the crew down there. He's already given hugs all around up here. Engineer Matt Lucas getting in on that. High fives coming from the pit box. And Ratcliffe knows that not only have they broken the string of different winners here, but that his man has now led more laps in the Nationwide Series than anybody else. What about your boy, Carl? I mean, Kyle. Whoops. Uh, <laughs> whatever. A rose by any other name is still the same, right? Yeah. Uh, great day for us. Great. I'm glad the weather all up, held off. Praise the Lord for a great day. Um, our Z-Line Toyota was awesome once again. It's good to have Kyle in the car. Um, just a great day. You like to say it all the time. Uh, lap later, so a couple, couple, couple of historic moments today. Uh, good day for us. All right. We'll watch Kyle do some burnouts now, guys, as he lights them up on the front straight. And it's colorful smoke as well. I mean, this is a heck of a display. Boys, way to put it together. Some of that sealer on the front straightaway uh -huh. makes that yellow smoke. He broke the record now by 35. He has 8,117 laps led. He ties for second on the all-time win list. This might be one of the all-time best burnouts. I, I've lost view of him from up here in our booth. There's so much smoke down there. There he is. See him through Might the see the bow. There it is. There it is. All right. While we wait for Kyle to make his way to Victory Lane, we'll step aside for a quick break as he catches the flag to the salute of the crowd. Definitely a big day for Kyle Busch in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. And let's send it out to Kyle. Big shower from the crew. And a few smart people waiting by the side. But you don't mind getting soaked after all that, Kyle. What a day for you, and on a day when it looked like you might not have the best car near the end of the race. It was, uh... It was a good car, you know. These guys did a great job for me. Can't thank Z-Line Designs, Jim Sexton, Jim and Monica enough, you know. Nice energy drink nationwide. Of course, uh, Gillette, Toyota, Marquee Jets. You know, it's fun to race out here with these guys and to race in the Nationwide Series. And I knew Joey was really good. Um, you know, I felt like our car was better on the long, long run, you know, half halfway on a fuel run to the end of that. And, um, you know, we didn't quite have that at the end. But, man, what a great race and uh, a lot of fun with his cars. And can't wait to uh, can't wait to keep racing these things. Let's talk about a couple numbers here. Two, you're the only two-time winner here at New Hampshire. Six, that's six on the year. And how about 8,117? You're the new all-time lap leader in the Nationwide Series, Kyle. That's pretty cool. And uh, it comes after beating one of the best. You know, Mark, you know, he's, he, uh, there's one more record I'm after. And that's the win record and uh, to try to beat him, see how many I can set. But, man, it's just, uh, it's a testament to these, this team, Joe Gibbs Racing, Jason Ratcliffe, and Brad and all the guys that do such a great job for me. I can't thank them enough. And, all the fans, it's awesome to be able to put on a show like that in front of them and come out here. And of course, uh, you know, I hope nothing better than to keep racing these things. Unfortunately, sometimes I got to race on the Sprint Cup side on, on uh, non-companion races, but it's fun anytime I can get back behind the wheel of these things. I really enjoy it. And hopefully we can, uh, you know, get another one next week in Daytona with the new one. With the new car next week. Looking forward to that. The 18 bunch seems to have it together no matter what car they're driving and no matter where they are. And now 
they've won New Hampshire for the second time. Only once to do that, Vince. Brad Keselowski didn't get the win today, but he did uh, add to his championship points lead by about 10 points. So uh, maybe in the small picture, you didn't get what you want. Big picture, you did. What was the difference between first and second today as you came in runner up? Well, you know what the difference was, was the start of the race. Uh, the 18 car was just a little faster to start. We worked on ours and got ours just as fast at the end, if not just a touch better, but uh, then we didn't have the track position. So uh, it just, just takes a whole race and we we're just off that little bit and just didn't quite execute as well as the 18 car did today. But uh, We'll keep working on that. It was still an awesome showing, and uh, we're happy to come on in a second, but we want to win. Before that final pit stop, you radioed in, and you said, I think I got a shot at this, guys. Then you had a little hang-up on the left rear uh, in that stop. How much did that hurt you in uh, your bid to win this race? Well, we had an awesome short-run car, so I, I think that's where we were stronger than Kyle, and the race came down to a short run, and we just weren't close enough to him. So, uh, you know, it, it might have made a difference, might not. It's hard telling, but uh, that's just the way the brakes go. I'm behind my guys in good times, and I'm behind them in bad times. So. Uh, we, we still got a lot to look forward to, and we've done a lot of great things this year, and we'll keep doing that. Overall, a good day for Brad Kay, second today. His 15th straight top 10, and he actually lengthens his point lead by 10 because he finishes one spot ahead of Carl Edwards, and he led where Carl did not. So he now has 2,641. Carl is 247 behind, then drops down to Justin Allgaier, Kyle Busch. And think about this, Kyle's not even running the whole series. And Kevin Harvick, who also isn't running the whole series, moves up a spot, actually, in the championship standings. Uh, if you remember how we started the day, if you didn't, lap seven was unlucky for car seven as uh, the 89 Morgan Shepard gets into the quarter panel and both go around, but the worst of the damage was on Danica Patrick's machine, and that's not the way she wanted to start the day. And then when the race was over, she finished in 30th position, a total of five laps down. Uh, she just let Morgan know as they pulled into pit road, I remember very well and she's with the doctor Jerry Bunch thank you Marty you know the final rundown will not reflect the progress Danica made with a damaged race car you saw the contact there earlier with Morgan Shepard and talked about the laps she kept picking up in her lap times in the last 30 or 40 laps Danica how would you uh, how would you gauge your performance here today um well it was uh, definitely a long day <laughs> it's always tough when you it's always tough when you start from behind like that and to be a lap down so quickly but you know, um, you know, it was a bummer to get lapped so many times. But it was a learning learning process, and um, you know, we we were very tight to start with, and we just kept freeing the car up, and it helped. And um, you know, I, there's a lot for me to learn how to overcome when the car does push, and how to drive the car. And you know, I was I felt like by the end of the I felt like by the end of the race, I I finally sort of had a a couple of things that I knew helped me out there um, to keep the car under control, keep the front end underneath me better, and ultimately just have overall faster laps. So I did learn out there, but you know, frustrating. <laughs> It is frustrating, you know, and Mark Martin and some of the Cup Series drivers said it takes a lot of courage to come here and humble yourself to have to learn this quickly. And boy, Danica learned a lot today, guys. Well, and let's talk about uh, as we show you the graphic of how some of the other open wheel crossovers have done in their first runs here at New Hampshire. And you can see that uh, Tony Stewart, of course, he can drive anything. He may be the exception to any rule. Montoya finished 34th and Dario Franchitti started 10th and finished 13th. Danica finished 30th today. Stay with us. We still have a lot more coming from right here at New Hampshire. Celebrations continuing with Kyle Busch and the number 18 team for Joe Gibbs Racing. Their 50th win as a team, 24th by Kyle Busch for Joe Gibbs Racing. How about the ticket to the race? Just log on to NASCAR.com slash tickets. Our next stop, Daytona, with the brand new car. It'll be the debut July 2nd, 7.30 Eastern Time. Then we'll head up to Chicago for another Friday night race. And all the way through to the month of September, Labor Day weekend at Atlanta Motor Speedway. All right, guys, uh, what do you think as far as what we saw today? Pretty impressive performance. Yeah, another dominating performance by Kyle Busch. The thing I look at is Carl Edwards had another good day. The last four races, second, second, first, and third, and he's only gained five points on Brad Keselowski, who continues to be very impressive in leading the points. Yeah, another Kyle Busch win, another record that Kyle Busch breaks uh, by leading all these laps that he's led in his career, and then a, a streak broken. This is finally the only repeat winner we've had up here. Well, and uh, you mentioned Carl Edwards uh, just a moment ago. Dave Burns caught up with him. 
Carl Edwards came home third today, and Carl, on a day when you started second and kind of fell back a bit, are you happy to get back there? I mean, obviously you would like to win, but uh, you were struggling there at the end, it seemed like. Yes, I would have liked third uh, a lot more if it were the two Gibbs cars in front of me and not uh, Brad. He, he got me on that last restart. Joey spun his tires, and he did a really good job of moving over for the guys behind him. He could have bunched the whole thing up and, and made it chaos, but... We got third. Um, you know, the, the last few weeks have been really good for our Copart Fast and All Fusion, but the problem is we just we're not gaining points on the leader. So we've just got to keep doing what we're doing, keep working hard, and uh, and hopefully over these next you know 10 or 15 races we can close that gap. So just proud of my guys. They did a good job. I got to say hi to Kate and Annie at home. Love you guys. You've improved so much in the last few weeks, equipment-wise. The cars seem to be so much better. Do you know what was missing today? Yes, I, I, I think we're just struggling a little bit um, off of the corner with, uh, with the way our uh, power is. So we're going to talk to Joe Balish. They took the engines and they uh, dynoed all of them. And we're going to go find out what those numbers are. But um, our guys are working very hard at the shop. We just aren't, don't have the availability or, or the ability to, uh, to run that FR9. And so maybe that would be something we could work out with Joe, make these Fords more competitive. Because our cars are great. we just got to be faster down straight away. All right, Carl, still trying to make it a great championship run. Uh, second still to Keselowski. Gained a little bit of ground last week and about stayed the same this week. Also a great run belonged to the 99 and Trevor Bain, a career best fifth place today. And uh, I know getting to the end of the race is going to be one of the goals for this team. And your crew chief, Jerry Baxter, is trying to get you to understand that sometimes you as a young driver, you got to slow down to go faster. Hard to do that at a place like Loudon, isn't it? Yeah, they say eight, run 80 percent. I say, OK, Jerry, but it's still 100 percent all the time. You know, you can't make a race car driver go 80 percent. But uh, this was a great run for out, our outpec here Toyota today. Couldn't have come at a better time. You know, we really needed these strong runs coming on. Uh, we went a little slum in the middle of the season, but we had an 11th at Kentucky, 10th at Road America, now 5th here, and uh, all the Outpec Care people were here today to watch, so they were here to support and had a great time. Uh, Gary Bechtel was here, and uh, our car was really strong all day. You know, we, we had a really uneventful day, rode up front, you know, top 10 to top 5 all day, and uh, that makes for a fun, fun race, you know, and uh, you got to thank Nationwide Insurance for putting this series on and letting us come out here and have fun with it. Strong day for the 99, a career best 5th for Trevor Bain. Doc? And right in front of him, finishing fourth, Joey Logano. And I walked over to talk to Joey. You would think you finished 40th. He seemed somewhat disappointed with that today. Why? Ah, I screwed up. I had driver error, I guess. It, uh, it sucks. I, I, I don't think we were going to win the race. I, I thought maybe we'd have a shot at it if it stayed green and we didn't get that caution. It seemed like I was running Kyle down. I'd be faster a few laps. He'd be faster a few laps. So it had been tough to pass him, but I felt like I had a better shot that way. Uh, and when the caution came out, um, I didn't think I could spin my tires. You know, I didn't think it would. Uh, I was really gunning it down the back straight when they're caution, trying to spin them, and they weren't. I was like, I think I'm all right if I just hammer down on this thing. So uh, I went for it and uh, just too aggressive on the throttle and uh, spun my tires. So um, probably would have finished third. We weren't uh, that last green flag run. We weren't that good after that. You know, uh, we we struggled to keep up with the 60, and then the last three laps was finally good enough to get to them, and it's just so hard to pass at this racetrack. So. Uh, it's disappointing. I feel bad for the guys. They work hard and uh, they deserve better than that. But, um, you know, I, I, if we were lucky, we would have finished second, but probably third. And even with the spinning tires, a very impressive fourth place finish for Joey Logano. Dave? Doc Reed Sorensen finished eighth today, his ninth top 10 in 10 starts for the 32 team this year. You weren't up in the top 10 all day, though, were you? It was a bit of a, bit of a work process to get up there. Yeah, we lost a little bit of track position. We had to screw in a window brace under the green flag stop. Uh, that was that, that held us back a little bit, and uh, we almost actually went a lap down there. And uh, Pickard did a good job the rest of the day to uh, try to get us back up there. It was really hard for us to pass, so uh, losing that track position didn't help us. But uh, the Dollar General car overall was okay. We were really good going in through the center. We just missed a little bit on corner exit, so we'll uh, we'll try to get it better before the next short track wait race, which is Gateway, one of my favorite places. So hopefully we can get a little better before then. All right, Reed, uh, going back to Gateway soon. Love fix that, I think, and uh, they should be pretty good. Marty? All right, David, we'll take it over here in the pit studio uh, as we get set to wrap things up from here in New Hampshire on the day. So the rain held off, and Kyle Busch held off the competition and became the first repeat winner in 24 years of NASCAR Nationwide Series racing here at the Magic Mile. Now we think ahead, Brad, yeah. to next Friday night with a lot of exciting things happening in Daytona. So excited. We get to see the new body styles next w uh, week in the Nationwide Series. It's going to be fun to watch these guys draft those things, see what they're made of. It's going to be a lot of fun in Daytona. What do you see what the uh, the Ford and the Dodge look like? Ford, the new the car Dodge, body Chevrolet, styles. The Empower 
Toyota, Toyota. Yeah, this yeah, man. Going to be exciting. We get to see what the new cars race like. Of course, on the always exciting Daytona International Speedway layout with the drafting and the the, the different bump drafting and things yes, that'll go sir. on there. And Dale Jr. Yeah. going to be behind the wheel yep. of a three car. Always a threat. That'll and be uh, that is all next Friday night at Daytona. Make note of that. Friday night, the Subway Jalapeno 250 at Daytona from 7.30 Eastern time on ESPN coverage beginning with uh, NASCAR countdown. And just to put a button on this day, what can you say about what this young man has accomplished, except he makes the amazing look routine? Yeah, he, I mean, he has truly been remarkable in this nationwide series. He is a great champion. He is an outstanding race car driver. Every time he closes that window net, he is a threat to win, and he is sure is fun to watch. And right now doing something that uh, never seems to get old for him, <laughs> celebrating winning. That's uh, what he's here to do, and he's done it again today. Kyle Busch with his sixth win of the season, and again, the first repeat winner ever in 24 years of NASCAR Nationwide Series competition here at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Coming up next is Sports Center here on ESPN, and don't forget, next Friday night, the Subway Jalapeno 250 from Daytona at 7.30 Eastern Time on ESPN. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Kyle Busch, your winner at New England's largest sports stadium today. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.